Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in another quickie painting video. Today we're going to paint a portrait of Liron. He is a fellow watercolor artist and a YouTuber as well. If you haven't checked out his channel, I'll link his channel down below and at the end screen. He runs a wonderful watercolor YouTube channel. His channel has a lot of contents from his own painting demo to paint review and paint material review and as well as he do a lot of reviews on other master watercolor artists so you can learn a lot from his content he also write several books and things like that he also run a course i believe so he actually lives in israel i think and it is very very impressive that he's able to do all of that and his english is actually very very good i'm very very impressed with all the work he has done and social media such as instagram as well as running a very successful youtube channel so make sure you go to his youtube channel and check his content out so I came across this photo in his Instagram and I saw it's a wonderful photo of him. It shows a lot of his character and his uh, just personality overall. And I really like his, um, his yellow hat actually. And even though the lighting in this photo is not very defined, I still think it's a really nice photo to work with. So I decided to do a painting of him. It's the first time I paint another YouTuber as well as another artist so this is a very interesting experience for me but aside from that it's just like painting any other person so i start off with a solid drawing and i need to get the drawing as accurate as solid as possible especially painting a human face you really need to get a proportion and the placement of the feature right luckily his face has a lot of characters and his features are very distinct. So I have relatively easier time to draw him as opposed to drawing a pretty female, a pretty young girl, because it's a lot easier for me to work with somebody who has a strong feature like him. And also because I'm drawing a guy, I have less pressure to make him look pretty. And that doesn't mean I make him look ugly or anything, but when I'm drawing and painting a guy, I usually able to be a little bit more free, a little bit less pressure, and I can be a little bit more rough and a little bit more expressive when it comes to drawing a guy's facial features and his structure. So after finish the drawing, I erase some of the construction lines to make the drawing a little bit cleaner. And then I started off with the first wash. In the first was, as you can see, I already started to introduce some warm and cool colors. Like I said, because I am drawing a guy and especially somebody who has so much character like Liron, I want to push the color just a little bit more. Now, I still want to stay in some sort of believable realm. So I just want to push the warm and cool a little bit more. Because if you look at the photo, you can still pick out a little bit of warm and cool tone on his face. Even though most of the color temperature is more towards the warm side because of his skin and because the color of the light. But if you look at, let's say, his chin or somewhere under his cheek, you can still see a little bit of cool color there. And I'm just trying to push that a little bit more. So when I am actually painting watercolor, it will actually make things look a little bit more interesting. So the first wash, I also paint the hat in and as well as introduce just a little bit of value. So if you see his tip of the nose and his chin and his cheek, I actually use a damp brush, almost dry brush to lift out some of the paint while it is still wet. So you can get a little bit of value going on. So now on to the second wash, I usually like to start off with the eye and work my way out. I actually learned this approach from Charles Reed, who is a wonderful portrait artist that I really admire and respect. Now his color is a little bit more saturated than me. He has a lot more punchy color and his paint is a lot more stylized, but I learned from his approach when it comes to painting portraits. I really like it. 
I admit it's sort of an odd approach when it comes to painting a portrait, because most people will lay out just different layers by a slight darker value than the last, and then just work their way into the darkest dark. So this way is a little bit more odd to me. But I don't know, I just really like this approach and it works for me. So I think it's also very important that you found a workflow, you find a approach that works for you. So this is what works for me. I don't suggest everybody following this way. But if you found a way that works for you, definitely use that. That being said, there are certain things that you still shouldn't forget just because you are doing a different approach, such as you still need to connect a lot of shape as much as possible. That's what watercolor is about. If you don't connect any shape, you just end up going to have a lot of little shapes and your overall painting is just going to look way too busy. And at the same time, you really need to think about edges when it painting portrait. Actually for any painting, but especially for portrait, because if you have hard edges everywhere, your face is going to look very hard. Unless that's what you're intended to, then you need to start to think about softening some of the edges. Because when you soften an edge, it speaks transition. So if you have a soft edge, it speaks transition from light to dark. That also means the form is turning. So here you see me trying to connect the his right eye, the eye socket, down to his nose. And you can see that as I try to connect the shape, I also soften some of the edges. So his bridge of the nose is there's a little bit hard edge, but also a little bit soft edge. And this speaks structure of his nose. So if you look at the tip of his nose, you see the, there's a transition from light to dark to the bottom of his nose where I put a little bit darker value there. So that you will see his tip of the nose is round and there's a transition from light to dark. So it speaks the form. The form of his nose is turning. Now from the shadow next to the wing of his nose to the cheek. So if you emphasize the shadow on that area, his cheek will pop out. So it's the same thing from the tip of the nose to this cheek. It's all about value, using the value to make the form pops. And that's what you do when you are trying to paint a portrait or anything else, because it's all about optical illusion. You're painting a three-dimensional object, three-dimensional person on a two-dimensional surface. So to push that form is very, very important. And this is why I usually make the nose a little bit red, because the color red projects. So if you paint something a little bit redder, it will be a little bit more popped out. So that's why I usually paint the nose a little bit redder, so it projects out. It's just a personal choice that I usually do when I'm painting a portrait. And now I'm just trying to paint a little bit hair and as well as his forehead. Again, I'm trying to connect everything as much as I can at this stage. And I don't want to make an unnecessary hard shape at this point. And this portrait, because he has very distinct dark mustache and beard, so I am waiting for this layer to dry to put on his mustache and beard later. So I haven't painted any of his facial hair just yet. So that's why his face looks pretty odd right now. And I am just kind of betting on after I paint his facial hair, his face will just kind of come together. Because watercolor, I cannot work backward. I need to work from light to dark. So I'm pretty much just laying the groundwork right now. Now the layer is dry, I am starting to work on his facial hair. It is such an important character on his face, so I really need to put some good emphasis on it. And also I'm mixing quite a bit of dark mixture for this one, so it gives me a pretty good reference, hard dark, I need to go. And after I paint 
his facial hair, I will start to realize what part of his face I need to darken just a little bit more. And to paint a dark shape like this, I also need to vary the color a little bit. So as long as the value is right, I can play with the color just a little bit. So some part of it, I make it warmer. Some part of it, I make it a little bit cooler. So they don't just look all the same. If I use all the same color, it will feel like it is really dark and heavy. And I think it's also very important that even though I am painting facial hair, you need to soften some of the edges and let some of some part of his beard and mustache kind of melts into his skin tone. So it feels like it belongs to the face. It doesn't feel like it's some sort of sticker it just stick on his face. I think that's very, very important. To have some of the lost and found edges on his face is quite important. One of the biggest issue I see from a lot of students when they are painting portrait is that they separate the form they separate the feature a little bit too much. For example, somebody paint a mouth, somebody paint a lip, and they just do a hard shape of the whole lips. And the lips start to look like it doesn't belong to the face. The lips looks like it's a cutout. So same thing as facial hair and eyes and eyebrow. You want to separate them a little bit, yes, but you also want to make it belong to the face instead of popping up too much from the face. So right now I am darkening his face just a little bit more. Since I put the facial hair in, now I know how much darker I need to go for his the shadow of his face. So I need to get quite a bit darker in his face, in his eye socket, and underneath his cheek just to push the form a little bit more. And in the meanwhile, I still try to maintain this warm and cool relationship as well. So the way I approach portrait is like a balancing act. I paint a light value overall. I give some place a little bit of punch, a little bit more dark, and I use that as a reference to make other part a little bit darker and work in a transition tone and so on. At this stage of the painting, I'm definitely starting to work on a little bit more detailed form. So the shadow of his lower eyelid, uh, the little form and fold and wrinkle at the corner of his eyes. Just little form and little detail that make his face look more believable and more dimensional with a little bit more definition. Sort of like sculpting and modeling. I'm taking a break from the face and start to work on his hat. So I definitely need to loosen up when it comes to rendering his hat because the main thing in this painting is his face. So if I put too much detail on the hat, that's going to take the attention away. So I just kind of wet it randomly and I just paint in the wet area to let the edge and shape just soften and go abstract a little bit. As long as there's a little bit hint of the form, it's good enough. I also go ahead and work on his shoulder, his jacket, and give it a little bit of the background. Notice I leave just a little bit of highlight on his shoulder, just so that the color doesn't blend in with the background, but also give it a tiny bit of the rim light illusion there. It's sort of like a graphic treatment rather than trying to make things realistic. And I try to give it just a little bit of form and I also play with the color just a little bit, adding some blue, adding some purple with a lizard and crimson, just to make the painting looks a little bit more colorful. That matches his character anyways. He speaks with a lot of energy usually, as opposed to me. I try to sound more exciting before, but usually after two minutes, my voice died down again, so I give up on that. Here I darken his neck a little bit, so I separate his neck from his face. Just give it a little bit more depth. 
and give it a little bit more detail on his jacket and we are finished. This is a very fun painting and I hope you enjoy this as well. Be sure to check out Li Ron's channel, he has a lot of amazing content for you. And I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and I will see you guys again very soon.